Tim Portaler is the show where we jump around a whole bunch of different games and systems and hopefully do so in a somewhat coherent manner. I am Seth, I am writer slash game master, and with me I have... I am David, and my shirt has four cows on it. I am Rachel, and I am not wearing four cows. Yeah, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Kyle, I'm wearing a Doctor Who shirt that says, Exterminate, 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 strangely enough, four times. So we got, we got a Don't cross. exterminate my cows! Well, I, I remember to exterminate three, and there's three yeah. of them crossed off, so the fourth one. The fourth one is unchecked. Right. And you don't even watch Doctor Who. I watch a little bit. Then why no. do you have a Doctor Who shirt? Because my parents got me this for my bar diet. Well, good for your parents. They know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dear listener. Maybe someday we'll get to Doctor Who, listener. Anyway. Apparently, <clears throat> <laughs> there's, there's actually a very good RPG system in the, in the Doctor Who universe. The Doctor Who universe. Anyway. <laughs> well, I'll be the companions. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I do, I don't want to TPK a whole team of Doctor Companions. <laughs> that would be so dark, too dark, too dark, uh, too dark for the timeline. Yeah. So, as we begin, we are still in Rokugan. Focus up, as you have gone on your myriad of adventures and reacquainted yourselves with previous samurai you've encountered uh, negatively and express your displeasure with them very vehemently, sharply, and. Uh, now, as you're pressing onward to hopefully fully infiltrate this fortress of the Okita League, a band of ruffians who are yes, uh, assailing the land with vileness and trying to take it over, um, you are in the fortress of the Wakened here in the... Well, not quite in the fortress. Yeah, it might be kind of beneath it. Anyway, okay. uh, where... You're betwixt the lands of the Lion and Crane clans, and here in the, the uh, Fortress of the Wakened, which you have begun to slip underneath via a passage for a great beast uh, that seems to be under the, the thrall of whoever this Wakened is, you uh, have bypassed the various rings of defenses and simply, as stated, taken the, this uh, hidden passage left hidden in the shadows, and uh, have proceeded to delve beneath this fortress, hopefully finding a lost friend of yours, uh, the boy Isodashan, and perhaps, hopefully, finding any sort of sign of your combat instructor from Yatamu Laj, uh, Mudarkatal. So, as we pick up the three of you, along with your other companion, Jukedan, have pushed down into the darkness kind of lighting up with torches as you as you push on in this mm -hmm. vast corridor that is meant to accommodate the form of a great beast, and you have heard some sort of warning horn <clears throat> blare from muffled overhead in the world above, and you have begun moving faster into the darkness, hoping to find the end of this passageway. Because we had heard the uh, warning horn that uh, was interpreted as they found the slaughtered party. They seem to have found something, and you did in fact do some slaughtering recently. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, they left a note. I didn't even notice that. We left a note with the dude. There was no leaving once again. I left a note. Full circle. <laughs> so, no. Yes, dear That's listener, warm. we have come full circle. Like a ring. Now we're just going to do. Four more. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exhausting. Anyway, as you push on through the darkness, I believe you all, well, at least a couple of you had torches. Well, which... funny enough, in the, uh, what is it, the Traveler's Pack, it doesn't say anything about torches, so... No, no, we... we took chunks we, of wood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chunks of <clears> the wood. Made torches. Yes. You MacGyvered right. badly, but, uh... You know. if, if we can see our feet and we don't run into a wall, we're good to go. I mean, there's not really great visibility. You know how in D&D &D they say you have a certain uh, view of the world beyond mm -hmm. the light of your torch? It's really not even as good as D&D &D puts it, because as, as uh, you have your torch, one, because the light is kind of up in your face, your vision is uh, 
obscured by that and trying to see past that into the actual darkness, there's really not a whole lot you see in front of you. So as you're running, you probably want to have like a hand up or something just in case you do come into a wall or something. <laughs> Bring him down, Legolas! <laughs> anyway, so, yes. As, yes, you push on through the darkness. Uh, you all still have weapons drawn at this point. Jacaden very much still has his, his rusty blade mm -hmm. in yeah. his hand. And as you're. Did, did he not take one from um, the guy we killed? He seems to prefer his. Okay. That works for me. Yeah. It's like uh, warriors get attached to weaponry and armor and stuff. It's weird. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. So, as you are pushing on into the darkness, are you going full I think, bore? I think or you, you just... should uh, pick up speed after that warning. Also, like, oh. kick it up a notch. Yep. And this reminds me, we also heard some, <clears throat> you know, foot bar leaking noises from the big DC making its way around every now and then, right? Yes, on occasion you had heard kind of a... But it doesn't sound like it's coming back quite yet. Or, you're not really able to tell. You're not hearing any shuddering of impact at this point. We walk faster. Yes, I would say take it up a notch or two. Wow. While, while still being able to see. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say maybe, like, would it be easier to see if we had, like, a torch at the back of the group? Or I think if you just like hold it up above your head high enough, it's... So it sounds like I'm not holding the torch, because if I were to hold it up above my head, it would be like, right in your guys' face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold one of them, and I'll and be I in can front. Hold another. You want the marching order that you're set? Um... How wide the, is the tunnel? The, the tunnel is more than wide enough to accommodate you all okay. in, a, in a I row. I think we, we would be kind of sticking close together. Yeah. Probably in a... a Two and two formation. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, then why don't everybody go ahead and uh, roll for me an appropriate check that I, 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 what would they call this? Fitness? Or are we not doing the running? Check, mm. Making a check on the running? The, the running is part of it, but this is also kind of keep keeping your wits about you in the situation. Vigilance um, check, which doesn't exist. Sure. Uh, Fitness shift? I don't know. That sure. I, I, I don't know that. Let's, let's do fitness shift. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, two opportunity. Maybe. I'm gonna take three opportunity. Yeah. Wow, the guy with the shortest legs. He's the best. Okay. Marvin the Martian. <laughs> just turning up the, the ground. I'm here. gonna blow up the fortress. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> uh, so as you're you're pushing on through the darkness, there comes a point when Sahin and Hideyoshi. You, both of you are getting a little winded, uh, just the kind of foreboding heaviness of the air within this tunnel, which yes, there are, there is air in tunnels. No. Yes. <laughs> air deep air tunnel. Oh, also though, is this actually a tunnel because it's got both ends closed? Mm. The real question. Yes. But as, as you're pushing on uh, both Jakadan and Mintus, are uh, at this point kind of naturally coming up to the, the head of the column. So kind of determined marching order at this point. And both uh, Sahin and Hideyoshi, you're, you're in that kind of weird uh, space where you're not really feeling claustrophobic, but it's kind of that enclosed feeling where you're looking over your shoulder every now and then like, what, what, is, what is coming up on me here? And just, just kind of an, an eerie sense of your surroundings. Okay. <clears throat> Did you? Oh, I just realized we're basically in a air submarine underneath ground instead of water. A stationary air submarine. Right. Sorry. For some reason that blew my mind there for a second. Also, <laughs> on a totally unrelated note, um, 
is since we know that there's some sort of weird pollution thing going on, mm-hmm. is the air feeling kind of we're underground, so I don't know if that would probably seep in because there's air in a tunnel. Yeah. Um, this is the air, granted, it's not really, as far as we know, affecting us travelers from another realm. No, as far as but, you know. um, Or at the very least, you understand that it's not affecting you in the same way. Right. Um, but does it seem, does the air seem to have, a, for lack of a better term, a different consistency? Like, does it feel more thick? Or it's like the whole, like, Lord of the Rings, like, Mirkwood has more of a uh-huh. kind, of bleh, kind of feeling rather than, uh, you know, other forces. Uh, that, that makes sense for what I'm trying to ask. Make a survival... Subsist. Okay. (laughs) Well, okay. Might as well, I guess. Um, I'm now compromised. Uh, But I got uh, one success, one opportunity. Okay, well, it would be fitting that you're feeling a bit compromised at this point, as you're grasping... It's difficult, and it seems kind of nebulous in the near darkness, but as you're looking to the faint tendrils of smoke that are coming off of your makeshift torch, you're realizing that the air is already thick with something murky. Oh, boy. Okay. And apparently it's freaking you out because you are compromised. Right, yeah. Out of curiosity. You do guys. I right, do I actually have cleaner air than the rest of my house because I'm so much shorter than them? <laughs> you you are not feeling as though it's granting you any extreme okay. advantage here. So in actuality then that means that whatever is in the air is actually it's not like smoke where it's kind of rises up and just Sticks. It's actually filling up this whole space up in It air. feels more like that, yeah. Like okay. it's just kind of. It's like humidity, where yeah. it's like it's just there all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, okay. Remember, it's not the heat; it's the humidity that'll get you. Right. Much like whatever this is, it's gonna get us. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Maybe, but you're freaking out now, right? And uh, getting a little panicked, and you really want to get out of this tunnel. Is I try crazy. to run faster, which is probably still slower than the rest of the group. Well, but... you've got more successes than anyone else. So can we try and catch up. You can attempt to do much go faster. Much go faster. Uh, yeah, it'll it'll seem to be that that fitness shift, and the target number is going to be two because we're trying to catch up with Memphis, who had to go ahead and for success. One success, two opportunity. As uh, what did what did Yoshi get? <clears throat> is it worth it? What are you gonna do? I don't think it's worth it. So I got nothing. All right. Hideyoshi just literally goes, no, stop. And <laughs> yeah, Minfist just like, what? And I use the opportunity to try and remind uh, Memphis that we need to stick together. All right. How, how do you attempt to do that? In a soothing way? In a threatening way? Threatening. All right. Uh, why do I ask? Uh, Thanks, Mom. <laughs> uh, so we'll call that command. Um, insight, I guess. Okay, I'm glad you picked that one because I don't have any skill right. It is three, though. I have four dice. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. With my poor roll and you saying about, I think I, I might have to take this. Okay. Uh-oh. And I'll be compromised. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing either I get no results because three of my dice were blank, or I explode this and I might get more successes. Ooh, Is it two, target number three? three. Three. This, That's going to be rough. This is basically your second check trying to stop him. Or your first one failed. I don't know. I feel like with uh, trying to run through this tunnel faster, mm-hmm. but also not wanting to lose sight of companions because my companions are only tied to home anymore. I, I think she's going to freak out a bit. Okay. 
This actually works in my favor because I was having a sugar rush mm -hmm. the other <laughs> earlier today. Yes. So yeah, I'm burning off the extra sugar, so I should be good to go then. All right. Yeah. But Sahin, you take the strain and you are also now compromised. Can I decide not to take the exploded all the explosion exploded dice after I explode the die? Yes. I believe so. You have to keep the one initial one that you exploded in the first. But then all can the I ones. can I choose not to take the exploded dice after I explode it if it if it doesn't? I don't believe so. I believe okay. once you've used it to gain more dice, that's like you're you're keeping that one. Okay, because in that case, since I'm going to already be compromised anyways, mm -hmm. um, that's one success, one opportunity, and two strife. So I got to take it anyway. So oh boy, yeah. So you didn't, you didn't hit the, the target number no. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like this is <clears throat> dice. It gives the character a chance to roll additional dice and decide whether to add its result to the check. Yeah. So if you decide to use it, then. So basically how this plays out, then, is you are you are astride with Jaqueta in the front. I'm, I'm trying to run up and, Memphis, you get back here! Mm -hmm. But first off, you all just see Memphis kind of look around and go, Huh? Oh. Oh my. And just... <laughs> Just get like just start breathing uh, frantically and just choo, just well, turns out that animal. Yeah, and uh, from his from his, Memphis, if you yeah. don't get back here right this instant, I'm gonna kick your butt. And you hear, but but <laughs> echoing down the tunnel as you you have shouted this and uh -huh. jostled at Memphis's side uh, is the, <laughs> uh, the the jostled form of Jeremy the cricket. And Jakaden, at this point, is uh, he also uh, looked after Memphis, is looking back to the two of you. Do we consider him a canary, or do we catch up? I probably stumble over rock at that exact moment. <laughs> I I'm starting to try try to pick up speed. All right. Seeing that Jakaden will try to at least keep pace with. Do I you. need to roll that check again? Mm -hmm. It's the fitness. Do you want me to roll anything? Or? Nope. Mm -hmm. I'm just. I'm creating baseline for you guys. You're, you're just. <laughs> so hands I can't yeah. take strife right now unless I'm unmasking, which. Mm, you're yeah, pretty I, frustrated. Yeah. But you will make an echo. Let's see. Um. So, question. Mm -hmm. Is the feeling in the air similar to the feeling in the air around the anomaly we experienced in Space 1889? Is it starting to have that same feel? It, I think how I described it earlier is that it felt more sickly. Mm -hmm. But it so reminiscent, I think, maybe? Reminiscent, okay. I, I wonder if... Um, so... One of my my anxieties is cynicism, always looking for how to disprove new unusual things. Okay. I think that I'm gonna get so much in my head and and focus like be focusing worriedly on the fact that it feels so similar. Like so, I'm going back to like it, it feels new, but I'm gonna focus in on the fact that it has a reminiscent feel and be freaking out about that and and, and worried about Memphis and just like just. Totally losing it. So you're unmasking at this point. Yeah. All right. I'm like trying, trying successfully or not to run after uh, Memphis. All right. Um. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's one one success, one opportunity because I decided not to take the the strife, or could I have taken the strife since I was unmasked? If you're unmasking, then then yes, it's just going to mean that uh, you. All pretense of subtlety in this endeavor is kind of gone at this point. If you are, I think I've already yelled. Mm -hmm. So and yeah, if you're if you're yelling, once you've unmasked, you, at the moment of unmasking, your strife goes back to zero, so you can start adding strife again if you need to. Okay, in that case, I actually will keep that die that was a success strife. Mm -hmm. So I'll be two success, one opportunity, one strife. Right. At this point, two. then you are. Plow after Memphis. Yes. Keep in mind, both me and you now are in the dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I have a torch. Oh, you do have a torch. I well, have in the dark. So when you're running with a torch, 
basically uh -huh. the the wind rushing past it. If it doesn't put it out, it takes it to like the very barest stub. I'm not like, thinking about that right yeah. now because I'm unmasking. Yep. So both of you at this point are like weird flashes of light in your peripheral vision, not really able to see what's in front of you. And Minfus, as you're rushing on down the tunnel, you just hear Minfus. And what? 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 Yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna kick your butt. Yes, and uh, you're you're just hearing the feet turning up the ground after you, and uh, you know the you know all all these. Uh, Unfriendly words being hurled after you, the uh, I presumably the whole meant in love, entirely yeah. in love. If you think you know what pain is, boy, <laughs> then, yeah. I'll give you something to cry about, right. etc. Et and uh, I just look at Jake down and sigh and keep walking. Jake is at least trying to keep somewhat of pace. With I mean, others. I must okay. Walking, he's like, <laughs> I think at this point we're probably in race walk okay. speed. Yeah, he's speed he's, walk. he's running. Like he's he, running, running. He doesn't want to let them out of his sight. <sighs> All right, I'll I'll upgrade to a jog. All right. I still can't see anything, and All right, well, I won't require a check for a jog because you okay. just kind of <laughs> just kind of seen up ahead where like the the weird. Swishing torches up ahead in the darkness, or casting weird shadows in the in the tunnel, etc. And uh, the two figures up in front, you just uh, hear Memphis is. Is he? <laughs> no! Yeah. At any moment, I expect them to just like face plan their torch to go out. Uh, possibly. Uh, uh, both of you. Uh, go ahead and. Mm, let's call this. Don't do that very often. Let's do a, a tactics uh, sacrifice. Oh my. Okay. Let's do a ta tactics mm -hmm. sacrifice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> None. Because I can't take it straight. All right. <laughs> That's a void, right? Mm -hmm. World. Um, there's no point in taking that one opportunity. All right. Uh, so, as the both of you are running down, uh, doing the whole three scooters, I'm gonna, and... <laughs> yeah. Do I trip, then uh, roll into him, and then we go tumbling further down? Sure, I like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, just as you're about to catch up... Uh, about to, to leap. Yeah. You leap! And then just kind of tumble and uh, instincts take over, and I, I I try I try and tumble into the like oh I miscalculated. Oh, and Memphis, you are struck in the back. Just that's my opportunity. <laughs> that's my opportunity. Yes. Is I'm I'm not able. I don't like face plant the dirt. I tumble into Memphis. Tangle of shorter and longer limbs just kind of, <laughs> kind of splat down into the the end of this uh, decline of this tunnel. And Ow. yes, <laughs> find yourselves at this point. Uh, torches have kind of been scattered off to the the ground, but you you feel um, just how like maybe the air around you has shifted. That you feel as though you have entered up into a larger chamber. Chop 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 chop. And then, yeah, Jacob arrives first of all. Uh, Pulls you, Memphis, back to your feet. Yeah. Just, just, just plants you on your feet and cuffs you on the back of the head. Ow! <clears throat> and then just... We adjust my mask. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls Sahin up afterwards, and uh, even in the dark, you can feel his I'm mad and disappointed look. <laughs> and <clears throat> then, uh... Wait, mad and disappointed? Yeah. Who? Jakeda. Jakeda, yeah. Then Hideyoshi jogs up with an actual torch, yeah. and just kind of looks at you guys and just shakes his head, starts lighting the other torches I, again. I just look down at the ground and kind of shoot, so you don't kind of play around with the dirt with my feet, you know, kind of like, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just give you a look like, it... Hand your torch. Take the torch. I right. take it, like, quick jab out and grab it. And then Blair. I walk in front. <laughs> All right. As you do a perception check into this. No, game. you don't. <laughs> uh, 
But no, as, as each of you retrieves your, your sources of light, uh, you actually are looking about and seeing that, yes, this does in fact look to be a larger chamber. You're not able to see the roof of the interior any longer. Um, the only other thing you are able to tell is that about 10 feet out from where you guys just fell in a tumble of limbs, it appears to be an opening of some kind in the floor. I go and inspect the opening. Mm-hmm. Right. Follow us here. Wait a minute, isn't the fortress above us? Why are we... that's so odd. <clears throat> um, actually, I'm going to um, examine the outer bounds of this chamber. Okay. How big is it, first of all? Uh, well, first of all, deal with Hideyoshi as you walk up to the, the edge okay. of this opening. Uh, as you kind of bring your torch around to the left, to the right, realizing that's a big opening. It's probably about as uh, the, the same diameter of the tunnel you've just been passing through. And as you peer over the edge of it and attempt to see the bottom, you're catching the barest flicker of some kind of uh, small glinting object in response. And you're kind of uh, looking down and grasping that there's like smaller uh, rocks, pieces of metal strewn about down here. And they appeared to be pushed up on one end of this pit. Uh, okay. It seems to be arrayed in some kind of mound that has just kind of been pressed down. Okay, is it like a like a ramp or like a large pile of droppings? No, not a pile of droppings. You don't think, uh, but like in in that shape. Yeah, just, just, uh, well, it's more of a, kind of, kind of like a, an earthen, uh, slash rocky, slash Slime metal pile? Fight, yeah, kind of thing. Okay. Um, how far down is the top of this pile, and about how big is the pile, can I tell? Uh, it's maybe about 20 foot drop. Okay. Oh, how, how it, big is the, the hole that I'm looking at? Uh, the hole's about... Uh, 20, 25 feet in okay. diameter, and uh, uh, the pile probably takes about a third of that on the bottom. Okay. I contemplate the hole. Okay. Diggy, diggy hole. <laughs> <laughs> I am a samurai, and I look down the hole. <laughs> As Sahin, you begin trying to yeah, walk around. Yeah, just take it in the chamber. How big is the chamber? Mm, the entirety of it's maybe another 20 feet on either end of the diameter of the pit at the center. Okay. So it's like I could go to the other side and still see... Like, not in this light. Okay, not in this light. Okay. I'm gonna, like... You, you can see the glimmer of their torches in the darkness, but that's okay. about it. I'm gonna... Alright, so I'm gonna take a look around the, the edge of the chamber. Look for some some other entries. Okay. So he as you begin... I, I announced that to you while I went, and then I go do it to you guys. So, oh, yeah. so we know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Zahin, as you begin skirting the perimeter of whatever this large chamber is, um, there comes a point when you're just kind of looking up along the sides of the wall here. and then I'm abrupt- taking my time yeah. for the most part. Like I'm, okay, somewhere trying to be detail-oriented, but also quick. All right. Um, there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot of notes, pretty bland, floor, walls, and you can't see the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And then there comes a point, maybe about a quarter of the ray away around this chamber, that abruptly the wall becomes a grate mm-hmm. and gives your heart a bit of a jolt as you see on the other side of this a pair of eyes just staring at you. I stumble back. And probably a muffled shriek. With my perception check, do I hear shit? <laughs> <laughs> I proceed swiftly towards my distressed comrade. Okay. As yes, the rest of you 
hurry in to see what it is about this strange. It's kind of one of the one of one of those uh, shrieks that like you realize you're about to shriek and can't stop it, but you try and muffle it. So how? Oh. Yeah. Uh, as by the time they arrive, actually, Sahin, you've uh, gained a bit more of a, of a sense of the owner of these mm -hmm. eyes. You're catching kind of the, the watery glint of eyes, uh, further eyes, in the, in the darkness here behind this grate. And there appear to be at least a handful of people here behind these bars that are just looking at you and seem to be sizing you up, unsure what to make of you. Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> <laughs> How are they dressed? As the rest of you arrive and bring up your torches for some kind of light on the situation, poorly, very poorly. Uh, but do any gone. of them look familiar? Looking across their faces, nobody really seems to ring any bells for you. But yes, they appear to be denizens of Rokugan. You say how many? Half a dozen? Uh, about half a dozen, yeah. Okay. In this caged area in the wall here. And looking at them, we don't... I... Well, I'm sure the rest of us... We don't get like a weird feeling like, Hey, that guy looks strangely familiar. Okay. Don't seem to. But as Jaqueline is looking over their faces, just... Well, it seems we have happened upon... The creature's feeding station. The grate. Is mm. there a way to move it or open a door in it? There does appear to be. Uh, as you actually go ahead and make a smithing adapt check. Okie dokie. I will talk to you about that. Excellent. Uh, I don't have any rings in smithing, sadly, but um, it's a depth, and I have three water. So I okay, I, I also have time. three water, but I rolled an extra die, ring die, and that gives me three success, one strife. All right. As you're sizing up the front of this grate, it appears as though this is much kind of the, the same trapdoor kind of setup where it appears as though at the creature's leisure, it can reach in with some kind of appendage and just push it, push back on this uh, heavy grate and retrieve whatever snack it wishes. All right. Is there a... Is that the only way to get people in? Like, whoever fills the cage, are they just, like, having the monster hold it out of the way while they push people in? Um, or is there, like, another trap door in the ceiling? As, as you look, it, is, it does appear that there's not necessarily a, a trap door, even. It just looks like there's a, an opening. Okay. About ten feet up. Mentally stacking slaves on top of each other to see how high <laughs> I can get. Oh, this got dark. I'd help him back. I got rope. Alright. But none of them have said anything or if you're inclined to say anything, they just are appearing cowed and reserved and Great. just waiting to see what happens. They're probably malnourished anyway. But since they've been here a lot longer in the wonderful effects of whatever's up in the air, how do they look compared to other members of the people that we've seen that live here? They also have that gaunt, sickly look about them. Okay. Also, I wanted to take a look at Jakadon. Now, since we're actually stopped, I can kind of take a quick look okay, at it. looks worse. It looks worse? Okay. I'm going to actually ask them, has that, does anyone here know anyone, a young boy named Desota Sean? They look to each other, an older woman just shakes her head. We'll do what we can. They almost seem indifferent. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep walking around the uh, circumference of the area. Yeah. Okay. As you continue in this, find a second cage on the wall that seems to be filled with a few more of these unfortunate souls, and more wall, more wall, you appear to be coming upon the fringes of a third such cage, and you just hear, 
a voice from the darkness say, Well, this is about right. Does it sound familiar? No. No? Wow. From, is this a voice from inside the cage? Yes. I, I approve, this is the third cage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to approach the third cage and look around and see who's in here. As you bring up the, the light, there's a single individual in here. He's just kind of sat and crouched up against the wall. And you note the opening to this cage has been barred into place, so it cannot be opened. But, uh... Can I look familiar? Do you have this uh, sim familiar sense at all? As, as he stands up and walks over to you, that definitely that... I don't know that swagger anyway. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, kind of, the kind of look in his eyes that you're accustomed to, like, well, here you are. Better late than never. You've <laughs> seen it whenever you were late for class. Well, we were wondering where you went. Yeah. Likewise. So, mm. presumably you have some insight as to how we might gain egress of this facility. I'm going to examine the bars, and I'm going to see if they would be vulnerable to the cut from a Kami-powered super sword. You're examining the metal? It seems like normal metal, whether or not a Kami sword would... Ah, I'm gonna... The, the bars, are they like good, new, shiny metal, old, rusted? Yeah, especially, it appears as like this is, if you had to guess, probably a whole bunch of metal scraps melted down and okay. kind of put into a vague mold of what they needed and kind of put down here in the pit. Is he normal uh, Mudarkatol-sized, or is he more normal person-sized? He's, he's, uh, he was an accomplished operative before he was combat instructor, so he is well accustomed to okay. blending in well to whatever world he goes like, to. Is he a big dude, or he's, is he a medium-sized dude? Or He's, he's a sizable guy, but he's okay. still human-sized. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Hand my torch to the most responsible member of a party, Jakadon. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to draw my sword, and I'm going to see if I can find a spot where the the bars look not quite as durable. And I'm going to press Hitsujinu against them and try to freeze the bars so that they crack. Okay. We'll first make a smithing a tune check to try to. Okay. Speak the language of the metal and figure out where the weak points might be. Also, out of curiosity, is there. Oh, great. Great, I can't really say which check, but is there like an opening where it looks like it was dropped in, or does it yes. look like. Ah, so it's still that whole idea of them being dropped somewhere. Uh, one opportunity, two success, two strikes. Threshold. Alright. As you're looking over the cell exterior for any sort of weak points, you find. You know, maybe a, a point where the, the metal wasn't as refined, as pure, it might have a slightly worse structural integrity. Okay. Kind of uh, to, the, to the left of the whatever opening there is. Okay. You press your sword against it, hoping to... Hoping to freeze it. Yeah. Uh, there's some, some frost that's spilling off of your blade, and over time it might have an impact, but it's not as though it's lightsabering its way through okay. this thing. Okay. Um, well, can we hold it to it for a bit and then try, like, taking a kick at it or something? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to... I'm hoping the decrease temperature is going to increase the metal's fragility at that point. Because if it's a whole bunch of things melted down, if they didn't care as much about getting it to a... Chunk of rust got yeah. in there and it's just not as solid. Yeah. Oh, yeah I'm, so I'm gonna hold it and press it around and do whatever I can to get as much ice on that section yeah. for about five minutes. All right. Uh, after about five minutes, you're like holding even like the flat of your blade up to it and mm -hmm. working it around and uh, Mudargatal is simply looking on, just kind of uh, arms slumped over the, the, the bars of his cell, just kind of watching your progress and as you kind of working your way around the bars, like 
it's cold. Okay. Oh, out of curiosity, since he's been on here a lot longer than we have, closer to the environmental side, apparently Memphis is very concerned about the environment. Mm. Um, this area. He's just... seeing Fern Gully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so terrifying. <laughs> But no, it's great that I haven't seen what he looks like normally in this area, but does he look like he's trying to have any, showing any effects of whatever pollution, chemical I mean, he whatever. looks malnourished, but it's different. Okay, from it's not like the whole yeah. weird something thing that other people are having. Okay, cool. Just curious. Um, While I'm freezing iron, you yeah. guys should ask Mudarkatal questions about how he got here, where this okay. is. Uh-huh. So, how did you end up in here? Well... Or did you just uh, appear in the cell? It wasn't I, quite, quite that unlucky. I kind of nudge Sahin and just kind of make eye contact over at the uh, Jakadun. Yep. <laughs> I just act like I, I didn't say anything weird at all and carry on with the conversation. Uh, but there, there, there definitely is a, a glance over on the part of Mudarkatal as well. Like, all right, but he's he's trying to play it off as you know, I wasn't I wasn't dropped in here, no. Mm. Uh, so, but it turns out uh, have a past encounter with the Lord of this place. Oh. oh. How is he like? The Wakened, then? He frowns and... I, I kind of give it, like, not to not give it away to Jakeda, but it's like, this, he's the Lord of this place. You know, the individual that's in charge of the Okita League, that is in charge of this port, that imprisoned you in this cell. Yes. And, uh, seems he is... Skilled enough that on our collective journey here, he was able to divert my path. Just to remind me, there was some weird talk about the oh, waking guy having like a weird haversack of some sort. I believe that JK Wait, you know, what? Or something like that. Wasn't that true? Or am I thinking of something else? I don't know why I had something like a flashback of this. I don't know, Kyle. I don't know. Maybe it's just my weird mind going weird places. Uh, GM does not remember this. Okay, that's so. fine. That's all right. Um, I don't know. It's not like we have a recording that we can <laughs> right. go back and check and see what, what? I said. Anyway, <clears throat> I asked him if the name uh, Veral is familiar with him. Familiar. It is a slow nod. Yeah, see. It was by that name here as well. Hmm. And uh, it seems to be part of a collective group that, well, seem intent on the... We've had, en- I'm pretty sure we've had encounters with this group at this point. Yes, I believe so. These events and those you encountered in your previous excursion are related. I was worried. It feels reminiscent here. There's this this sickness in the air. This one feels a bit more deliberate, perhaps? Maybe. Refined? I'm not sure. Enhanced? And Mudarka Tal actually looks directly to Jukaden at this point. Is is kind of step back and is just letting you catch up with somebody you apparently know and hopefully can free from this point, but mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mudarkatal actually looks to him. None of the others down here are really that responsive. I was wondering if perhaps you had noticed something, anything about this place. Jakadon looks about kind of confused. Well, I would, I would pull, I would go grab Jakadon and pull him close and say, like, point to me and point to him. Look at the difference. This is like your Because Jakeon right? doesn't look <laughs> good, great, right? He looks yeah. like starting to look gone. To yes. Him. Yeah, so I, I would point that out. And Midarkatol is nodding. Yes. And... By the I'm... way, this is Jakeon. Oh, yes. 
there's a, a, a half-hearted kind of a dip of the head from Mudarkatal. He's not seeming incredibly concerned about observing traditions of this world at this point. And That's why he's here! Is because we got in trouble for not doing that! The situation yeah. <laughs> Our situation oh. is dire. Okay, yeah, from fine. From a certain point of view. <laughs> he's, he's got four arms, and he's had it up to here, 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 and here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Ooh! Ooh! Oh. Can I use that as the, oh, he's not even trying right now, with the fact that I just reached my threshold, to use extra frustration to smash the, uh, the crate, the crate open. You can attempt to. I'm going to attempt to. Uh, so we're looking at a target number five. Okay. And it's gonna be uh, melee overwhelm. Yep. Okay. Do I get any bonuses for having iced it? Uh, that's what brought it down to a five. Oh my. Okay. Well. From what? Uh, what's uh, they go uh, six to highs, I think. Can we help at all? Well, he's just punching help? It. Yeah, he's he's basically just hitting the the bar. So, actually, question, dear GM, yes. could I maybe, with my artisan eye, mm. look at this here design of the great and maybe figure out ways that I can adapt it to make it pop open? Oh. Um, you would presumably have to unbar it, as well as get sufficient force to push the grate open, which is built for the large creature you have encountered. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. One opportunity, three strife, four success. Oh, man. Also compromised. Can, can he right. have cracked it? Uh, it is... It, it, uh, as you uh, kind of king, 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 uh, struck against it with your blade, it's it's biting into it, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's not really showing signs that it's gonna give at this point. Puff, I'll <laughs> off a few feet. Just <sighs> the darkatel just after you just kind of raises his hand. Watch out, there's a pit. Yeah, I saw the pit. I saw the pit. <sighs> <sighs> but. Uh, Jakaden at this point is seeming still rather confused and unsure why you're pointing at him. What's what's going on? Why are you pointing at me? What's what do you mean? And uh, Midarkatal just nod. Interesting. I was wondering if the others who were simply oblivious because of their fractured state of mind. Well, could I maybe, since I went to school, use my knowledge? Mm -hmm. um, could I maybe think of, since we know that the big forearm, weird, beepy thingy, whatever, is from the Starfinder universe, think of anything, I believe it's from the Starfinder universe, right? Mm -hmm. you were saying that's that. what, that's what could I saying, yeah. now piece them together, like, wait a minute, uh, obviously this thing is not from this world because it's not, it's affecting certain people, they're not noticing it, it's not affecting us, could I maybe think of anything from, like, say, the Starfinder, or whatever universe we're calling that in game, mm -hmm. uh, to go see if maybe if I could think of any, like, say, biological weapons or things or stuff to control people or, you know, affect people or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just go ahead and make, a, ooh, we'll call this a hard intellect role for your genesis. To see a okay. large knowledge thing? Yes. Ah, hard. <laughs> This were what DD, it would be animal handling, but no. Hmm, okay. One invented. Okay. Presumably, there would be devices used to keep creatures in check so that they could be used for intended purpose rather than, you know, eating you. Same school kids. Um, but anyway, okay. Uh, Memphis got nothing at the moment. I got short little arms. I can't really, I'm not the strongest individual in the world. Well, as Midar Patel is looking to all of you at this point, he seems to mark that each of you is wearing a, a badge mm -hmm. and Koyosuru and just asks, 
Should I take it as there is a sign that there will be reinforcements coming? <laughs> You're compromised, no. so are you actually laughing? Oh yeah, I'm laughing out loud. Are you unmasking? <sighs> Not yet. All right. It's real close. It'll probably be whatever it is that... <sighs> Should I? It's up to you. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do the unmasking and then just like laugh hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just echoing through the chamber here, and uh, the dark just looks to both of you. That would be a no. Somebody should uh, quiet him down. I would go over to him and clap my hand over your mouth. <laughs> Very carefully, pull your hand away from my mouth, trying really hard not to bite you. You bite me, I bite you. I know you do. And I, yeah, like that's what I say to you in my look. I chuck well, up anyway. And I keep it quiet from there on. Seems you uh, have things fully under control, Memphis. Oh yes, I stop yes. chuckling again. I I, I do, yeah, um, yes. Yes, we're going to get you out of here because I'm in control. And I'll go ahead and punch the thing that, uh... All right. <laughs> Do it. Uh, go ahead and attempt a martial arts overwhelm check. All right. Oh, no. Overwhelm? Mm-hmm. Fire! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta do this when I'm at. Compromise, so I can't keep any stress. So let's see how this jumps. Oh, well, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, I only have two success, one opportunity. Well, as you pull back and just wail on the on the bar, it's and instant, yeah, instantly your fist just aches as. The thing did not budge, uh, and I kind of just, yeah, <laughs> one moment, I'll go walk off a little bit and just, <laughs> Jeremy thinks you're starting to chorus, and, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. and then remembering Jeremy, I'm going to take out Jeremy and just kind of, or his cage, just bring it in front of my face and like, mm -hmm. kind of look around, Jeremy, do you have any ideas of how to get uh, past the bars? <laughs> Okay, I got you. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something else. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go back, and I'd like to try a heartrending strike against the bar. Interesting. Because I can take my weapon and I can inflict a crit mm -hmm. against uh, against the bars. All right. We'll see how right. significant your critical role is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a uh, target number four martial arts. I know. Out of curiosity, yeah. Since I use my wonderful perception skill, <laughs> um, was there actually like a keyhole or anything like that, or does it just look like they mel uh, made this whole bar thing down here and just locked it into place. Uh, yeah. It looks uh, heavily chained into place. Okay, so is there like... There there are locking mechanisms, yes. Okay, I'll walk up over to Sahin, who's the ninja rogue of the group, and ask uh, Sahin, do you happen to have like a lock picking gift or anything like that? Three success, okay. two opportunity. Okay. So I did not succeed in inflicting a crit upon it. Well, no, nope. but I did still hit it. Yeah. So I don't know that they're. I mean, I don't. Know I do I damage to it. I do. Technically, uh, yes. I do five damage to it. Mm -hmm. Which, if it uh, doesn't uh, deflect all of that damage, uh, yeah. Actually, there's got to be rules for sunder somewhere, but I don't know where they are. Well. Let us consult the book of our rights. Uh, 
course, the first thing that I see in the index with S is sweets. That's that's, oh, yeah, the, only that's thing, right. the only thing that seems to be the, the soul sunder maneuver. Okay. Never mind, Ian. Uh, but no. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, even if you got a crit, I would probably rule that it would have to be a 16 or above. Okay, I... To slice through metal. Yeah, I, I figured it'd be tough, but I was displeased and wanted to try. Um, well, as you're there hacking away at the bar, Mudarkatal finally just raises a hand against the, the clang, 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 just like, waves you off. Look. You are unable to get me out of this cage now. There are more important things that need to be done. Right. Specifically, is this a kill or a capture mission? Also, we have to rescue a soda shaman. Who? My young lad. What? My, I, I have an apprentice. He looks to the rest of you. What? <laughs> We I suppose it'd be most accurate to say that a young man with a mission acquired the rest of us. Alright. Well, I haven't seen any youngsters down here, thankfully. But well, that's good. As for this Veral individual, I do not think he can be reasoned with. Alrighty then. He just looks to you meaningfully. So then, if you can find a way above into the fortress, I think it would be best to remove the head off this monster. Any uh, location tips? When I was brought in, it was with a bag over my head while I was unconscious. Decaden actually points oh. out. I will have some knowledge, at least, of the layout above, having been here previously. That would be very useful. And just to clarify, there's only the holes going up through the prisoner and little things that you see that actually go up. Yep, as far as you know. Okay. Well, we haven't, or have we finished a circuit of this chamber? We have, we have one quarter left. Okay. One quarter? What are you laughing for? So I'm going to go... <laughs> wow. I'm going to go look at the last quarter. All right. As you make your way further around the perimeter of the chamber, um, just in general, if folks wish to make, uh, we'll call this, we'll uh, design, adapt. One success. Mm -hmm. Well, poop. Because I'm compromised, I can't take any of all those. So I just got one opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could have been a strong roll. One success, one strike. Alright. Uh, so you continue to look around for any means of heading upward. There's about an hour of frustrated looking around before uh, finally Zaheen, you just frustratedly kick a portion of wall and it just... Aww. Why, I believe you found something. Well done, Zaheen. I just glare at you. Well, tally-ho. <laughs> I'll go ahead and peek my head through the door and look in with my perception check. And kind of look up into this extended spiraling staircase that appears to go upward. So we go up, up, up the stairs until we reach. <laughs> Did, <laughs> how does, had Isotachan given me back the pillow book, the adventure book? Mm. I think he still has it. Or had it. Yeah. I believe so. Okay. Before 
We leave um, Dark Tall. I was gonna. Does he have? What does he have in in the cell? Anything? Pulls out his back. I hand him the blanket out of my traveling tech. He. I don't know. Is, out. It, is it cold? I mean, it's not especially cold, but no. he reaches out and takes it and. Well, um, thank you. Thank you. Out of curiosity, since I don't actually, per se, have rope, but I do have a small tent, I would imagine there's mm-hmm. rope in the small there's tent. There's a bit of rope in the small tent. Is it enough, per se? To go from cell up to a hole that they dropped him in. Possibly. Possibly. I'll go ahead then and pass through. I don't know if I can pass this through the grates or whatever it is, cell block thing, but pass from Dark Tall my bow, my quiver of arrows, and the he rope. Starts taking <laughs> things that you're just like suddenly shoving through the bars at him and uh, takes them in his arms. He appears a bit awkward because he's used to having more arms. Right. And. Uh, Kind of, what am I meant to do with these? Well, maybe you can shoot an arrow, I don't know what's above us, but maybe climb out. He looks over to the opening above. Well, I was let down that with the rope. Oh, well, uh, the uh, spikes were not filling the passage. Spikes? Yes, uh, if I attempt to climb back up, I will be climbing against a series of downward facing spikes. Oh, well, that complicates things then. Yes. Do you still want the bow and arrows then, or? It might make for a nice surprise if a jailer comes about. Certainly. I would give you that, but I already am uh, lent that out, so why don't you keep that? <clears throat> Did you give your knife to a boy? No. <laughs> I Did he give his knife, knife to a boy? <laughs> I just pass him one of my knives that I have. Alright, so now you have a knife? <clears throat> uh, I thought no, was... I gave it to Mudarkatal. Oh, yeah. okay. So he, he accepts it. Yeah. Well, yes, I can make for some very unpleasant reciprocations of their efforts on me. Like, have you seen any of the, uh, the Okita League down here, as, are they all up up through the holes? Occasionally I am visited, sometimes by Viral himself, checking in on my status. He seems to think that I would grant him some insight into the lodge. He whispers off to you. Eventually he may be right. So that is another reason I'm grateful for the weapons he provided. Did you happen to notice how he got down here? As he looks about, I didn't see him arrive, no, but presumably well, looks over to see where Sakin is kicked frustratedly at the wall and yeah. the wall has oh. opened up. It was yeah, to the left, hidden in the shadows. Yes. David was the... AFK, yes. so yeah. that's a way that he probably came through. Thank you. Yeah, it's out of Medarkatal's line of sight, so yeah. I wasn't able to see it specifically. I like them. But he takes takes the blanket and kind of tucks it away in the, the corner and puts the, the weapons underneath it. Hopefully a little inconspicuous, but he at least has some weaponry at his disposal. Good luck. You as well. I wait. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to go and join Sakin. And... I wait for them both to leave, and I just kind of sheepishly go, yes, I did get my knife to a... a Kid, sorry. But as everybody else has walked off at this point, he actually motions you closer. I come closer. The three of you should not underestimate this Vera. He is uh, armed with weaponry beyond this world. Like what? Did you catch anything or? No, specifically, he was threatening me with a particularly wicked looking firearm of some kind. I believe it was a shotgun. I see. Thank you for the heads up. Yeah. Yeah, head. Yeah, that, that, good day. <laughs> if you can find a way to push forward without taking your friend there into a situation you cannot comprehend. True. That didn't work so well the last time. 
What do you mean? Uh, the the space one that we had comrades coming in, although that one it did actually help because then he regained his memories, which actually worked out better for him. But in this case, it might not be best because it might break him like he did the first time that the other guy, the dryer, sorry, the dry, 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 dryer wolves. And, <laughs> dyer. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, good day. <laughs> Yes. We'll try to do better, teacher. Uh, I sheepishly want to off to join the rest of the group. Right. So. And then, before we head out, we will find a way to get you out of there. We'll be back. Should not be your first priority, but thank you. To the doorway. All right. We begin making your way upward. If I had a chance. Granted, Jakalon's with us, but I do want to pass along the information about uh, Mr. Shaka building uh, boss fights. Mm. If I ever get a chance with, to my compatriots, since I don't think they were around when I was talking to Bird Dark. Do you find a clever way to get Jakalon out of your shot? Um, I said, look over there. Mm. Um, no, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So, I'll give back. You. All right. So you're beginning to push on and make your way up this very narrow, honestly, spiral staircase. Up, up, up the stars will down. It is dark, except for the light that you bring with you. Because here's the thing: is like I'm feeling like he's saying our first uh, goal should not be to get him out of there. But if he knows more of what's going on here. Wouldn't that be helpful? Possibly. But our, our first goal is to put a stop to the evil plans that are probably involved with causing the quiet. I would have gotten away yes, with it too. Yes, but if the Minerva can help us with this goal. Right. What would be great is if we can find access to his jail cell from above, take the spikes out, and let him out. So, in that vein, I was thinking I would be trying to see, like, keep keep my head on straight of, you know, going up the spiral staircase, and which direction do we go when we get up to, to find the top of Madarka Tool's cell. Alright. That's what I want to try to be, like, trying to keep straight in my head. I was like, okay, we go in here, if we go this, this way. Alright. At one point, Jaqueline actually kind of looks back to the rest of you. I'm confused. Your mentor is quiet? Huh? You mentioned he was quiet, but he seemed All right. talkative enough. He's usually a lot more quiet, so this was a little more than usual. Hmm. He's been alone for quite some time, I imagine, down there. He didn't have anybody to talk to, so... Except for Baron. Which, uh, that J.K. Dan just nods. It is strange that your mentor seems to think that he is in command. Then who is the wicked? Well, it seems like they are the same person. Yeah, it sound, it's sounding to me like they're one and the same. As I'm, like, doing the mental well, like, calculations. Out of curiosity, J.K. Dan, since you were part of this uh, organization for a little bit, who is... Uh, the figurehead of it when you were here. The one we spoke to was Viral, but... So you haven't actually seen this uh, Awaken, then? No, the Awaken, the rumor is that he is from somewhere far from this world, but this Viral, he is of the Lion Clan. Are you sure? As far as I know. We'll ask him when we see him. Understood. Oh, and Sahin, if I can just borrow you for a moment, I do want the apologize mm -mm. for. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out some things here. Okay. Don't distract her. Uh, but but oh, oh, okay. And then once <clears throat> we get to the top of this, do I know which direction to go? Okay. Uh, what would we call this? Let's make this 
and yeah, let's call this design adapt. You are adapting to the design of this facility. Two success, two strife. All right. Uh, trying, trying to keep track of which direction is which as you're going up and up and up the spiral staircase in the dark <laughs> and mostly quiet is a bit difficult. But as you reach the top of the stairs, you think you've got it situated where you're like, okay. If there's a corridor here, we should go right, and that should lead and us. That, and as soon as we get up direction. there, I immediately go the direction I think we need to well, be going from a dark top. Really quick, though, maybe yeah. we should all remove our badges and just put Ooh. them somewhere else. Good call. Yeah, actually, take my badge of previous room and put it in my backpack. Yep. All right. Yep. Glad you went through all the trouble of getting those. Right. And, well, no, we learned how to pick up stones. Yep, really handy. And we learned how to work together and find the, um, whatever the weed. weed that was. Yep. And four of the five of us learned how to get a horse home. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as you reach the, the top uh, of this staircase, there appears to be <coughs> a door awaiting you. You just, is there, uh, like... Is it just a door, or does it have like one of those like little window things in the top part? Just a, a flat panel of the door. Listen, listen. Uh, hey. And so I, I immediately go the direction. Well, there's I, a door in the way. Oh, there's a door in the way. I mean, do you just push through the door and head in the right direction? No, we listen. No, I would, I would be smart and wait. Okay, you do hear. Do you listen for a minute or so? There's the occasional. Seem to be footsteps passing by in either direction. Also, out of curiosity, do we have to know how we have, to, we have no way of keeping time? But kind of an idea of maybe what time of day it is since we made our escapade in the middle of the night. Yeah. It took a while for us to go open the trap door. Mm -hmm. it took a while for us to go through the tunnel. Mm -hmm. it took a while for us to go actually go rendezvous with uh, Madurkatal and have mm -hmm. that conversation, do all that and all that. So it's probably early hours of the morning then, right? Mm -hmm. But no, you do not know precisely. Ah, I gotcha. Right. But just, yeah, occasionally you hear footsteps passing Occasionally? By. Is there, does there seem to be any sort of pattern to it? Mm, first one is after about 10 seconds, another one in about 30 seconds, so 20 seconds. Frequent. frequent? Yeah. Okay. Is there a door in the other direction? Uh, as you reach, the corridor in the other direction. As you, as you reach the top of the, the stairwell, that, is, that appears to be the, is the only singular option? opening out of here. Okay. Should we go one at a time? Or I, or? I think we go as a group and then we just um, fly casual. Okay. Right. I don't understand. Is that a reference to something? It was um, a, a play that we saw once. In your far away land. <coughs> Indeed. <clears throat> Right. Casual face. Mm -hmm. Like we were meant to be here. And I'm wearing the fancy armor, so I go first. Mm -hmm. So, open the door. Um, actually, this is Japan, so yeah, the fancy person is going first. Yeah. Before I open the door, which way? I point the direction where okay. we should be going. I open the door and I proceed in that direction. And and, and I, I kind of so I, I look a little more docile. I try to look more docile and follow. Like I'm part of, like, go. I want to use my small stature to hide in the shadow of my bigger, taller compatriots. Okay. So I want to be kind of in the middle of the group, I guess. All right. Uh, so you push out through the door and just enter this hallway and start walking in the right direction. Uh, pretty immediately, there is an individual coming up past mm -hmm. uh, the other the other direction. Just kind of looks up, marks all of you. So do you? Were you dispatched here for some reason? What's this person look like? What are they wearing? A uh, pretty simple garb who seems to be... Probably, you know, in his in his normal life was probably just a, 
peasant. Okay. I glare at him and walk past. Alright. And the rest of you I, I just hurry on past, like try to act like I'm just I'm just following orders, following Following Master Samurai. Mm-hmm. I've got two ceremonial items mm-hmm. to give me additional uh Yeah. Just to say it. Make a performance. Uh you're being, you're being pretty brazen about it. So performance insight. Okay. Do I get assistance from my companions who are also playing up as if I am an important samurai who can't stop for this loser? I'll allow it. Okay. So that's going to give me four of these. And uh, this, I would say, is fairly related to my dark secret. So I will be getting an additional three strike and picking up a void point. All right. Okay, that's you know, <clears throat> we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna go all the way. Mm-hmm. Oh balls! Um, <clears throat> two success, one opportunity. Only two. <clears throat> all right. Yep. As you make to shoulder your way past, he does still rather timidly though, but brings his spear and like puts the puts the butt of it across the path. <sighs> Sorry, sir, but I must. Inquire as to what your business in the fortress is. We have business with one of the prisoners. With the food? Yes, but there are many down there. Why do you... Those are prisoners that are useless. Why would... Useless, and yet they are visited by high-ranking officers at regular intervals. Are they not? Only only the one. He is not meant to be food. It is... uh, the one we're interested in. Understood. What, what is your business with him? Need to know. Glare! Man. Well, that changes everything. Uh, and it's very timid. Need to know. Kind of like, I don't even know, but it's a need mm, to know. Mm, mm. Thou shalt not question my master. <laughs> oh my god. This, this is a straight up performance trick. Okie dokie. Do I get another another uh, extra ring die because my assisting friend? I'll allow it. But okay. Target four now. I cannot make that. Not even with flutters? Oh, that's a good point. I might be able to explode something and that uh, might work. Let's, let's go! Nope. Two success. Alright. As he's dancing between the two of you. Uh... Sorry, I I understand that you may have official business, but I must clear this. What's the population of the corridor? Yeah. At this point, uh, you got the guy in front of you who's barring your path, and you hear footsteps behind you. Memphis, you would be able to kind of look back over your shoulder and yeah. see that there's another guy kind of passing in the T section of the hallway and he's looking over in your direction, like what's going on? Ah. I'm going to uh, glare. Even more menacingly at him. <laughs> it's going to be even more and difficult. And say, I'll be back later, and you'll regret it. And then just walk off. And I follow quickly. He, you look back, and he's standing there holding the spear. He looks very put out, like, oh, like, did I just ruin my career? But he was going to stand by, you know, he needed to, to do his job as you push down the, the competent way. guards. Yeah. So we're heading back down towards the other guy. Yeah, who at this point has seen that you've turned around and then slowly making his way uh, past off to you, what would be your left at the, the T-junction. Is there anybody uh, else? As you look off down the way where that the, the second guy can come from, that that corridor appears empty for the moment. And the, there's just the guy that stopped us? Mm-hmm. I looked at Hideyoshi. It'll make a lot of noise. Was it as a stage whisper? Mm-hmm. It'll make a lot of noise. Let's try something else first. We can always come back. Well, since I don't really need to worry, since we got Mr. Samurai piloting this here group, I'm going to go ahead and try to keep much like Sahin was doing a mental, a mental kind of rough layout of the map of like, okay. Because we don't know where we are, mm-hmm. but kind of just trying to 
keep, in a way, like mental breadcrumbs of like, okay, we went down this passage and this passage. And okay. So, sorry, this is going to be whisper, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to whisper so the listener can hear us. Uh-huh. So, what if we went around the corner, made it sound like we were walking past <laughs> further? Do the whole thing. Uh huh, exactly. <laughs> and wait. Then just turn around and sprint down the corridor and punch him? I mean, I would very much love to do that. Also, I'm missing another person coming around the corner of uh, this because you mentioned it was kind of possibly. Uh, yeah, you're, you're hearing kind of steps coming along to the other end of the uh, currently empty stretch. But Jakeda oh does point out the longer that we are out and visible, the more likely that somebody is going to recognize your armor. Let's do you, Hideyoshi. Awkward. Let's do it. Okay. I am going to look all the ways. And is it still the only guy that's yeah. visible is the guy that sent uh, us the, away? Yeah, the, the second guy who had kind of come off to the, the place where you're kind of at the T-junction now, he, he's kind of walked off and doesn't, doesn't, doesn't paying appear attention to be anymore. anymore. And then back the way, the, the one that had stopped you at this point uh, is has is, is watched you get as far as the, the junction and then is kind of standing there. And he's actually at this point looking out uh, the windows at this point in the, the corridor. There's uh, kind of midway down each uh, length of the corridor. There appears to be a, kind of a long, skinny window, mm-hmm. uh, probably meant for firing down into what Jakevin informs you is the courtyard below. Right. Is he paying any attention to us anymore? Not directly, but he's probably still aware of your presence. Okay. Can we pause a beat? See and he wanders off? Well, he's see, on guard, see, so, he's so you're still pausing within sight of him? And just kind of no, no, no. standing there waiting? Like around a corner and peer, kind of okay, so trying you... to sneakily peer around the corner to see okay. what's happening. Uh, make a skullduggery... Con. Just trying to peer out. Three success, one opportunity, two strife. Okay. Uh, you peek back out into that length of corridor. He doesn't appear to be looking in your direction, but just still kind of standing there looking down into the, the courtyard below. Doesn't he, He's on, mildly, on mild high alert, if that makes any sort of sense, because there has been the alarm that has mm-hmm. been raised, so people are... On the lookout for does it feel like, like I could? Does it feel like I could ninja like stealth run at him and take could, him by surprise? Could attempt to. Then we have to take out two guys. Huh? Then we'd have to take out two guys. Why? Because we still have to get past the other guy. But she's, she's, talking, she's about. talking about the guy who originally barred your path. Oh, yeah. oh, there's no one. Oh, he's the only guard in sight. The other guy at this point has moved on, but you're hearing another. Oh, yeah. so oh okay. I'm, I'm trying to move fast, so I'm looking at you, kind of like should, like I, I, I can attempt. I give you the nod. Okay, I've the got nod the is nod. given. What is the, the nod roll? Is received. All right, uh, you're just trying to. Close the distance super fast before super you can react. Fast, but also trying to use my my elfness, like channel my elf. Channel your elf. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want ahead. my elf to be showing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not, not the world that's not your own. I know, I know. Uh, well, well, not not the ears, but the right. but the the being able to walk softly and stealthily. Uh, all right. Go ahead and make. A fitness shift. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it would still be shift, I think, to just... Uh, that's not a good roll for me, and I feel like I'm supposed to be stealthy. I feel, I feel like I put lots of ranks in skullduggery because that's stealth. Like... Well, uh, you, you can attempt to slowly sneak up on him. But if you're if you're running, there's only so stealthy you can be. It would just be trying to close the distance before he 
catches you in his peripheral vision and just like, Question, Whoa. could I um, say <laughs> that since I am trying to overwhelm him, that I could use that I instead it. of shift? As, yeah, you don't care if he notices you, you're just closing the distance before he can react. Yes, right. I'm trying to it. close the distance before and get past his spear reach mm-hmm. before he can react. Yeah, fitness overwhelm. Okay. And maybe run support and run behind her? You could attempt to. Okay. If that's alright, or should we let I, one person go in? I don't know how that would make her go fast with that. Well, no, I'm not trying to help. Like make her go faster. I'm trying to be there if things get out of hand. Well, yeah. I mean, we're as as soon as she makes contact in the literal sense, I will be getting my hustle on over there as well. Okay. All right. But for now, you're gonna let the ninjas ninja. For now, I'm gonna let the ninja right. ninja. the The tank is gonna sit back and wait. Wait a second. Wait a second. I just realized. I maybe. Could somebody skills. look up on page 226, Ninjutsu Skulk? Ooh, Skulk. I like it. 226, Skulk. When you perform an initiative or attack check using air, you may spend opportunity as follows. If you are in obscuring terrain, the crowd or otherwise concealed from sight, one character with vigilance lower than or equal to your ranks in Skullduggery loses sight of you. Okay. So, yeah, we can play it that way if you want. And basically, you have to roll for initiative with this guy. You know what else I can do? Uh, I, I, have, also... I have Lightning Raid, which says, Once per scene as an attack and movement action, you may make a target number three command fire check. Target any number of characters in the scene. Uh, if you succeed during a skirmish, each character increases your initiative by my firing plus bonus successes at the beginning of the next round. What so I can is, give you extra speed at the beginning. What is Deadly Sting? Deadly Sting? Mm-hmm. Deadly Sting. As in tech action, you may use one dose of a poison to make a target number three martial arts oh, air check. I don't have any poison, so. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is mm, Striking as Fire, which is on page 178. Right. I think I have that one. And that one just allows you to do extra damage or something? The strike people's bonus successes, or is that just normal? I don't remember. Fire. Fire. Striking is fire. When you make a martial arts fire attack action, you may spend opportunity in the following way. The next time your target suffers a critical hit, increase severity by one per opportunity. Oh, okay. Um, I think, uh, what is, um, and rolling for initiative? Uh, then you basically just choose which ring you are going to use for initiative, and that will determine your, your opening stance, but you can shift that on the following round. But in your initial charge to this guy, it would be uh, air. Why would it be air? If you're, if you're going to use your air overwhelm. Ability. The skull? Or, sorry, overwhelm is fire. Skull, yeah. Can you read the skull corners hand it to me? I will uh, reread it so that our listener can follow along. Hey, listener. Skulk, when you perform an initiative or attack check using air, you may spend opportunity as follows. Oh, oh, um, basically, someone loses sight of you. If you, for less than your ranks in skull buttery. Does my, um, I have three in Skullduggery. Okay, if you wish you can use that to basically, uh, sneakily open the skirmish, uh, close the distance, and if you succeed on your Skulk, he basically loses sight of you and he has no reason so to act. So what, I'm sorry, I'm still your... confused at what I'm supposed to roll to make this happen. Uh, for initiative? What does it say again, David? For initiative or attack. So when you perform an initiative or attack check using air. Yeah. Okay. So you be in air stance. You use your air ring. So I have to go into initiative, or can I make an air attack on him? I'm confused. Not without closing the distance first. Okay. So So basically, if you use your roll your initiative using the air ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you, if you successfully skulk, you can essentially probably just sneak up to him without being noticed and then okay, you know, strike so with whatever ability you wish. I am rolling initiative with air. What else do I roll with my air ring? Uh, 
This is potentially a skirmish, so I suppose it would be tactics. Okay. What, the rest of us, the hostile? Or not yet. I and we will. So what do I have to hit? Um, Three? It does not say. No? I think it was just opportunity. It says when you perform that check. So if you succeed on the check, whatever it happens to be, then so... if you're in obscuring terrain... Or otherwise concealed from sight. Which I'm around the corner. Yes. Right. So I would, I would just put that against his vigilance, which he's a basic guard. So it's just going to be a two. Okay. Oh, I'm going to be at my threshold again. But yeah. All right. Um, Sahim peers around the corner. Sahim marks her prey. The Olga pounce? So, um... <laughs> That's two success, two opportunity, and then two strife. All right. As you slip around to the corner and just ding, 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 ninja run up behind this guy, uh, you're up behind him, and he is unaware, so he's still just kind of looking out into the courtyard for any sign of activity or action that he might get to be a part of, and just kind of the shot... Uh, through the window, back onto his face, and suddenly up from behind, you see Sahim <laughs> come up behind. And what do you do? Um, I still have. I, I think once we went in, we would have put our weapons away to not look conspicuous. Right. Um, so I. Are you going to um, unarm him? Use your karate chop action. <laughs> <laughs> You're a toy! Well, what would that. What damage would be unarmed? I... Would it be enough to knock him out? Because that's what I'm looking to do. Uh, for unarmed, I believe it. Uh, the base damage is the ring you're going off of. That sounds familiar. which is air right now. Well, Unless you could I... change that if you wish. Now I can change it. Mm-hmm. And you switch into fire stance and just punch him as hard as you can. But you can't take any more stripe anyway. Well, I can technically. I just go over my threshold. If you're right. at, yeah, if you're at your threshold, you can still take more strife. Yeah. All right, it might be worth it. Yeah, I think I will. Um, and then, I, yeah, I think I don't want to, you know, draw any attention with drawing a blade or anything. So I'm just right. gonna like, yeah, you know, the 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 Vulcan like, <laughs> I don't know, man. A uh, Talara neck pinch. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so my thoughts to your thoughts. So in this case, then it would be um, unarmed martial arts, unarmed mm-hmm. fire. Yep, overwhelm. Which I can keep four dice because I'm in fire. I remember strength. Just wonder if you fire strength. You fire. So. A thing about fire stance is that you have to actually succeed at the check to get the bonus successes. True. But if it's just attacking someone, it's target number two. Yes. So it I, shouldn't be hard. I have three success already, and then a, the one strife. Um, well, if, if it only if it if it's target number two, would I be knocking him out for three? Like, well, that's would, just an attack. An attack. Yes. How, how do I know if I'm going to be able to knock him out with this? Uh, it adds to your damage, right? Yeah. Extra successes. So yeah, and basically, since you're, you're striking at him, you know, he's completely unaware of you. There's no defense. So whatever damage you do just goes right to him. So. Would you suggest I take the strife or not? Because it would put me over my threshold. It would uh, get you a total of eight damage. I, if I don't take the strife, I still have three success. I have four success with the strife. Right, so if you take, hmm, so it'd be, it's basically seven eight versus eight. seven. Yeah. Um, I suppose you could just go for seven. Okay. I think I will, because I don't want to be, um, uncomfortable. I, I don't want to be compromised right now. Okay, three, three success. Okay. So grant all some damage. I don't Three know where that, that number is coming from. The, your fire. My ring, fire ring is four. The ring of fire! And yes, so then, yes, in that case, you come up behind and just carefully. And 
snap of the, the neck, you actually do hear a and uh, Wait, so not, you're not sure if, uh, if anything's broken, but there was, crack or... yeah, there was definitely a, a crack of some kind as just crumples. I uh, grab him before he clatter, anything clatters to the floor. Good. I would like to reach out and try and grab grab the spear or anything that might clatter. I'll allow it. Uh, okay. That you're just able to... Because I... Uh, uh, so you now have an unconscious, possibly dead man in your grasp, and a spear in the other. I move down the corridor. Um, I will relieve you of the body and gently... Well, actually, let's uh, drag it a little bit further into wherever he was guarding. Uh, he was just in the... In the where hallway, where is, in the corridor, where's the, the doorway that window. we came through? Uh, it would be about ten feet back from your run. Okay. But so Shove him through that door. <laughs> okay. What kind of armor is he wearing? Really quick, though. Very basic kind of yeah. strapped on. Yeah, let's, let's... I'll, I'll take him and set him on the stairs and close the door behind him. All right. Uh, well, get this all done before the two other guys yeah, show up. Well, this is happening. Uh, there, are, there are footsteps coming along the... So, clarifying question. Yes. So we came out a door, yes. and there was a corridor, mm-hmm. and over here is like the main walking corridor, yes. and over here is the dude, mm-hmm. and past the dude is presumably access to the cells. It, as far as you are aware, it just looked like there's more corridor. There are doors kind of off. But that's the direction I... That's, yeah, that is where you believe there, there okay. is access to okay. the cells if, if we go in that direction, how long will it be before we're out of sight from people walking down the main corridor? You'd probably have just have to pick a door and one, hope it's unlocked, and two, that it's unoccupied. Because it's just a straight shot. Okay. Yeah. Ah. So how much time do we have after putting the guy in the top of the stairs? Uh, well, first you have to do that successfully. As, uh, you can't just do it? <laughs> Role-playing games. As uh, Hideyoshi, as you, as you rush in and attempt to manhandle this body... Uh, into the the door you just came from. Uh, go ahead and just make uh, for for all of that we'll say just do a fitness shift. Okey-dokey. Can I assist? Yes, is your I uh, would cock the body. Shift that body. Shift okay. that body. Well, all of my dice have strife on them, mm-hmm. so I'm gonna take the ones that exploded. Go bigger, go home. Yep. Yeah, I don't want to keep that one, but I do want to keep that one. There we go. So that's a total of four strife, but five success. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, you pull a full Assassin's Creed throw body in haystack uh, maneuver as you just charge forward in with uh, you and Sahin just kind of open the door, mm-hmm. uh, shove. And as you close the door, you do kind of hear. It's not very loud at all, but plop, 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 plop down the stairs. Oh no! And uh, Hideyoshi is Jikeda just kind of yanks you out of uh, that uh, other parallel. Uh, Hideyoshi, uh, but okay. <laughs> <You're in this. laughs> uh, the perpendicular corridor. Uh, Jikeda just kind of grabs you out of there and just kind of uh, both of you hoof it into the now momentarily cleared uh, corridor and. Okay. They, they come upon both uh, Sahin and Hideyoshi as you look back. Uh, the direction you think you should be heading is momentarily clear. Alright, let's go. Okay, as you go. Scuttle off in that direction. You are hearing behind you there are footsteps coming uh, to the point in the corridor behind that will be at the junction. They could potentially look and see if they turn in your direction. Out of curiosity. So, Jakeda is leading me right at the moment? Yeah. Right? If you weren't moving, he was dragging you. Right, that's fine. I'm going to keep my eyes, since I don't really worry about worrying about looking ahead where I'm going. I'm going to be looking behind. <laughs> All right. Seeing if they're... I'm like a little kid up there, yeah. but we're just like... <laughs> you're, you're kind of at the, the scuff of the neck and just kind of being dragged at this point. Right. Uh, but do you just try to push on to the end of the corridor? Do you pick a door? I'm a freaking samurai. I don't look around. Okay. <laughs> Real samurai don't ask for directions. <laughs> they don't. They command the elements to obey. So I just, I just keep walking. Hmm. All right. Uh, the individual behind seems to come up to the junction, and you hear the feet stop. Memphis says you're looking 
back and seeing this figure, it appears to be another simply dressed guard, and just kind of looking after your strange procession, kind of looks off either end of the, the corridor he's in, and just calls out, What are you, what are you, where are you going? What are you doing here? We don't answer, right? We keep going? I just keep going and ignoring him. Alright, I just... go, oh, well, shoot. Uh, all the prisoner people that they were, since I'm currently just caught by scuff my neck, it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, uh, how, is it, am I far enough away to see, like, discerning details on this individual that far enough away? Uh, or? Yeah, youngish, uh, kind of wispy, <laughs> mustachioed guy. Coming up, at this point, got spear in both hands. And okay, because I was thinking, challenge. I don't know how this would work, but since obviously there's a prison pet here and I'm being dragged, might as well play the part of a prisoner, maybe? Um, I don't oh, know. No. Aren't you armed? I am armed. That's why I was asking how close I was in order to get the And he's getting up. closer because he's I I'm going to go ahead. These people well, are so nosy. I know, right? <laughs> Um, I know. I'll create a distraction. Take off the mask. <laughs> um, All right. You're you're memorable. Yes, but at least it might shock him enough. Like, ooh, he, uh, he does seem kind of disturbed at the the countenance, the discomfort. And countenance. I'll go ahead and what the heck? Uh, go cast Blessed Wind and go put it right in his face. It's basically the World of Wind little thing. So mm-hmm. you can show him up in a World of Wind. All right. <laughs> Do you need to roll for that? Yes. Oh, no. Yeah. Not the best idea, but try to get him off for now. At some point, we're just going to be like, screw it, and just start killing everybody we meet. <laughs> uh, this is like every video game I've played where it's yep. like, Do the stealth section. All right, I'll give it a shot. Well, everyone's dead. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's exactly what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, it doesn't succeed because it's target number two. All right. All right. Yeah, I don't want to one, six. All right, this, you wave your hands and whoosh, try to throw out your, your magic. And, uh, yeah, there's this, there's this gust of wind that washes over him, and his hair is blown back. He looks really majestic, uh, but Damn. also pretty annoyed. Uh, at this point, he's just calling out, Alarm! Alarm! And is hooking it after you. His spear is down, and he's running. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead then. Can I take out my bow and arrow and, and shoot? Yeah. Or, 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 awesome. Let's, let's, no, let's at, do it. Let's do at it. this point, I think. Yep. Are we doing initiative now? If, if you guys are standing and fighting, then yeah. Well, I'm currently being dragged. I'm, I'm not thinking of standing and fighting. I'm thinking of continuing to go on. All right. Okay. But you, you are... Confronting this individual. I would mm-hmm. like to confront as we care, like keep moving in the, the direction we were planning to go. All right, the uh, I have no. Well, I do have a range weapon, but damn. So, so I thought this. you gave uh, Munarkatel your bow. Yeah, but I can go summon spears out of the air. Right? Oh. And uh, you can also use air for initiative if you wish. True. I think that I'm going to use water, so that way I can take some calm breath. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think that's probably what I need to do as well. Oh, and I think you guys need to remind me. And it's all tactics. And what, what in our ring? It's tactics in our ring, yeah. correct? Yes. And uh, one success, one opportunity. Mm-hmm. That was exactly the same as I. It actually was worse. That's crazy. sorry, guys. All right, it gives me two success, two opportunity. Yeah. Right. Sahim. Hi. So he... I either don't succeed because everything I ha- that has successes on it has strife on it, or I take the strife and I am compromised. What do you do? <sighs> What, calming breath takes away one, or yes. yep, and it can only reduce you down to half. And once I am over my threshold, I like I take however much strife I I took in this, and so like if I take two, I would be at ten, and if I took a calming breath, I'd still be over my threshold. Yeah, nine. Maybe it's gonna kind of work its way down. Yeah.
Do you want to be first or do you want to be happy? Well, I probably could be first considering I have two exploders. I mm-hmm. What do you do? I, I'm, I'm feeling... Um, lucky? Lucky. Um, lucky. Oh my goodness, I'm just going <laughs> for it. All right. Um, how many successes too many for... <laughs> It's, it's initiative, it basically just determines where you go in the initiative. Because each and every success I have, I'm just going to do it, whatever. I don't, right. I don't know what I care. It's four, four success, four strife. Okay. You're going first. <laughs> As you look back and see this man charging forward with his spear at this point, range three. Okay, so I'm going, I'm in water stance, so I'm going to take a calming breath. Mm-hmm. Still pretty compromised, though. Yeah. So I'm at 11 out of 8. Mm hmm. Almost there. And then I can attack. um, And so it'll be. um, I'm going to use. Well, okay. I can't just pull out my bow and and, and attack in the same round. Uh, With its water, you can do two actions, yes? Yeah, but I decided to do combat. We also have movement. Yeah, but from here you could, yeah, with the calming breath, you could take the calming breath and just bow, fire. Okay, would be that's your turn. Cool. okay. So you're not, you basically stop moving. Yes. That's, okay, that's fine. So it would be using the water ring? Yep. Okay. Unless you, uh, no, yes. Yeah, with the, this being your first turn, yes. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, martial arts ring. Mm-hmm. And then water ring, which she a tick. Crap. I can't take any more strife, so one success. All right. Uh, the arrow flies down the corridor, and you see him just kind of, yeah, and he yells. Honestly, like, there's things I like about this system, but I don't like the strife, because it, it builds up far too fast. Yeah. Uh, the arrow clatters up down the corridor. Uh, the guy's still moving forward. Hideyoshi, it's your turn. Um... If I take two movements, can I get to him? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do that. All right. And uh, draw my sword as hopefully part of one of those movements. Well, you got quick. Yeah, you have. I would do a quick draw. Yeah, quick draw. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, so this like, is not Pathfinder where you can ching! draw a melee weapon as part of a move action. No, but I can just draw it. Just quick draw. So I do. And I'm so in you one. just whip around and shing as you. <laughs> yes. Hey, Hideyoshi, draw. <laughs> I already did. Oh well. Okay. That is looking good, I think. So I don't want to use any of these three. Take that one. Ooh. Okay, so that's going to give me three success, two opportunity. Wow. And I'm going to. I'm in water stance, so I'm going to activate striking as water to bypass two points of his physical resistance. All right. So with those three successes, I'm going to be doing um, seven damage. All righty. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Seven damage. Well, uh, if you actually as you just the the, the moment, like in 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 the samurai duel, where it's just pause, crumple. And he's down. Wipe sword and hustle. Yep. All right. Hustling. Uh, at this point, you're hearing other cries, sounds from around the fortress uh, as you're hustling off down the corridor and looking out into the the side long window out of the corridor into the the courtyard below. You're looking out and seeing that there are figures running back and forth. Everything's Nobody... weapons put away. All right. Um, Nobody really seems to be entirely certain. What's happening, but uh, the alarm has definitely been raised that there is trouble in the more immediate vicinity, and you're hearing uh, footsteps coming up uh, and so, behind. Um, but we went upstairs pretty much straight because it was a spiral, mm-hmm. and then we went in the direction I thought we needed to go. How far from the doorway to the cell, roughly, do I remember it being? So, Heen, you're actually 
grasping as you look out into the courtyard that uh-huh. it's an as below. As, as below. <laughs> as above, so below. So the courtyard is basically... As below. The, the, the courtyard appears to be uh, uh, directly over the central chamber below, over the pit okay. area. And it's kind of the, the quarters along the exterior seems to... That means we need to go to a quarter around the courtyard. Potentially. So we, I would go that far, look for some sort of door or area to go uh, There are a couple of doors there actually pretty close together. Uh, one looks more simple, one looks more ornate. That's more kind of off towards the end of the corridor. Simple door? Simple door. All right, you guys push through, <laughs> slide the door behind, and look Is around. Is anybody in the room? Uh, there does not appear to be anybody in here at present. And you're looking around, there appear to be various uh, racks of implements of not niceties uh, arrayed about the room. Uh, yes. While they're looking around, I'm going to have my ear up at the door just to listen in case anybody's coming. Right. Uh, pretty quickly, actually, you're hearing shouts from outside and the choo 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 choo. Does the door lock or bar? It does bar, yes. Well, there are not sounds coming through. Actually, j- it's just a torture room. It no, ho- no holes in the floor? Trap doors anywhere? None that are immediately discernible. It might take some time if you wanted to investigate a little further. There's a body out in the hallway. Time is not really... Mm-hmm. So essence. in this room, is there anything looking like a pit that would have let a... Um... If there's not anything that's immediately obvious, I think I would just wait until I don't hear footsteps outside and then go for the fancy door. Okay. But is there a hole in here or like something that looks like you could lift up? See. Into Nothing immediately does that. Okay. You, you could investigate further, but it would take some time. Uh, how much longer do we want to spend in here? Okay. You don't. So, listen at the door. Alright. Let's go check behind door number two! You walk, you pause for a second, and there's the... Footsteps kind of pass, and there's a bit of a lull. Go! Go! Quickly! <laughs> Everybody slips out into the hallway, you're hearing and then the scattered other voices door. on either end of the, the corridor, this time uh, branching off uh, to the left, and off down that way appears, but the, the fancy door near the end of the corridor, you move and... <laughs> Uh, check yourselves inside. Here you're finding, as you look about, this appears to simply be uh, the base of another slightly more well-kept uh, stairwell that leads further up. Further up. Ah. So do we go up and just say... We'll come back for him later. I mean, he'd be useful, but if we can't find how to get him out of there, I and mean... he himself said that he's not the highest priority. Mm-hmm. And the further away from this area we get, the less likely we are to be. Yeah, let's go. What what else is in the room? Is it just the just the stairway? There are some uh, decorative displays along the wall. You know, the the uh, Rokugan equivalents of like coat of arms kind of thing. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, then in that case, just whoop, up the stairs. Which you know are actually intentionally tarnished and whatnot to represent the Okita League. Anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yes, as you push your way uh, more upward. Oh, and we bar the door behind us if it does bar. Uh, this one actually looks like it requires a key. Never mind then. Right. Besides, even if we barred it, it might alert them. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. All right. Uh, Almost immediately as you begin ascending these steps, it feels as though you're ascending into this brackish cloud. Mm. And... The environment. Hmm? <clears throat> this bad <throat> sign is a good sign. Let's go. And just to remind me, when I talked to Mr. or Mrs. Eric Tommy, mm-hmm. um, did I get... I know there was a location that I kind of blocked up. Was... I didn't probably get any idea of like what that location looked like if it was a tower or you know higher up or anything like that, right? If I remember correctly. Not really. Okay. Well, what I know is that so does Sean, the young lad is next to it, supposedly. That's I knew. Close. Okay. Maybe. Cool. 
Alright. Anyway, we're going up the stairs. Alright. Uh, um, since we're going further up, I'm going to go take a swift peek over at Takeda and just see how he's looking. Alright. Uh, he, without you even saying anything, is looking confused at this point, as though it's finally registering for him that something is wrong. Are you doing okay, Takeda, as we're hopping up the steps? I don't know. Like, these, these steps are larger. You can go uh, two abreast at this oh, point. Yeah. And okay. you're, you're I'll go kind of and walk with him to Pushing your way upward. And uh, as you as you're continue to hook your way, he uh, actually reaches up and just clutches his chest for a moment. And I'm feeling ashamed, actually. This is... Not something I have experienced. I feel as though my courage is fleeing me. Weird. But don't worry, you're a samurai. You have courage to spare. Gives a <laughs> hesitant nod and just clutches his rusty blade as you make your ascent of the last few steps. As we're going up the last few steps, it's like, to be honest, you've been for sure carrying my amount of courage, or carrying my load of the courage, so, you know, well done, that I'll kind of try to pat him on the shoulder bottom so I can't reach. It's kind of awkward. Kind yeah. of awkward for yeah. both of us, yeah. so, but, yeah. And so. Jeremy just goes, <laughs> 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 I love you too, Jeremy. <laughs> as you push up the last bit of the stairwell, you see that at the top, uh, Seems to just open up into a, ta- a chamber at the, the top of whatever this thing is. As you're looking out, there appear to be uh, windows arrayed about the top of this chamber, leading you to believe that this is likely some kind of a tower. And near the center of the chamber is a single figure who appears to be going over some sort of strange machinery implements kind of a reverie around the, the exterior of the room and there are various tables and notes scattered about and uh, strange glowing sources of light that are affixed at the kind of the, the junction between wall and ceiling kind of about the room at regular intervals and this figure is a little older, a little hunched, just appears to be busily at work, completely oblivious to whatever might be upon him. It's a him, right? Mm-hmm. It's not the science lady? Doesn't appear to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'll do things. With my perception check, I'm guessing, obviously, you guys haven't seen this uh, awoke or whatever it is. The... Get woke! Yeah, the other guy. Um, but I'm guessing I don't see any shotgun. Not immediately, no. And also, am I able to, does this machinery, machinery look like it's native to this world? Or is no. it, so could I use my one plus fuel knowledge to maybe figure out where it came from or what its purpose is? You may. Uh, yeah, just make it a hard lodge check, if that's how they call it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, knowledge lodge, basically. While he's is. doing that, I would like to look for the look for any sort of weaponry or other nefarious implements that this person might have on their person or within reach. You look about, they appear completely unarmed, just dressed in a, a loose hanging set of clothing. Okay. Nothing particularly astounding about this individual. Do I feel the same sort of pull towards this person as I do to other otherworldly persons I've encountered? Nothing really immediately stands out to you. Okay. In particular. Okay. And we are just seeing the back of the person, so. Mm. And you were saying we're in a, what feels like a tower at this point? It, it appears to be. Yeah, one success, by the way. All right. Uh... Yeah, this uh, looks like probably. And is it this like a whole room that maybe takes up the whole like? Yeah, hold well, the whole top of whatever this. Uh, so tower this is, is the top top yes. of the tower. Okay. On the highest room of the tallest tower. 
Uh, and yeah, just this appears to be you know Earth equivalent, maybe twenty second century machinery. Okay. Cool. But no, like weird back thing going on. Like this is the source of the weird pollution air thing. And there's only mm-hmm. one Definitely. one guy in here. He's older. Only one that you can see. Okay. Out of curiosity, you mentioned weird orb light things. Mm-hmm. What are those? What are those? Is he human? He used to be. In the back, he considers to be humanish shaped, uh, longer grain hair, probably down to his shoulders. Ah. And yeah, the the lights just appear to be some kind of higher tech light fixtures. Cool. Uh, you look over and see that Jakadan is simply looking around at the room at this point. What? What is this? Who is that? Looks over at the figure. That is Varal. Sword! And I'm going for him. Alright. I am not hearing that as the guy. I'm probably not going directly before uh, Mr. Hideyoshi over there, but yes. I'm now definitely looking for a shotgun like that. Alright. But yes. You're just you're just going in? I'm going in. Alright, uh, we're doing you initiative. Said it was 22nd uh, era human technology? Yeah, 22nd century. Roughly. Uh, so, yeah, we'll uh, just do a quick initiative check and we can uh, see how this begins at least. Okay. We're going to stick with our uh, water tanks. Alright. Because this is initiative, I get re rolls. One success. All right. Okay. We're going to go with three success, one opportunity. Okay. Okay. Oops. You are not the only ones who gets to roll initiative. No. <laughs> So, question. Yes. Running into battle, I have seen that this is the man who has put um, my my mentor, or uh, he's my um, combat instructor. Combat instructor behind bars. Is this related to something of your character? Um, I have other. Oh, he helped me with my flexibility, that's what I have. But, because he's combat instructor. But see, see, like, you know, the person who imprisoned mm-hmm. my mentor. I'm going to lose all sense of dignity and composure. All right. And you are unmasked. Unmasked. Run in. So basically, behind Hideyoshi. Yeah, you two are rushing. I'm a close combat guy. Only fools What is your initiative? Um. Well, the, I I was wondering, does that does the unmasking take effect before or after I roll initiative? We'll say before. Okay. It doesn't. Ha- it's fine if it doesn't. I just wanted to check. It would, it would make sense that it would affect how you, like, you go oh, into this combat. You unmasked and then George. Because it's it's just like the once it clicks that what Jukaion says, yeah. it's just like. Ah! All right. Why you? <laughs> and then. Um, <laughs> I- I'm going to be in fire stance because that's my strongest, and I I want I want to murder late something. <laughs> Burning him. Yes. Burning the villagers. <laughs> okay, so then it, it would be tactics. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm all behind. Tactics overwhelm. And then I can keep four dice. I just keep those. Mm-hmm. I explode. Yeah. 
Explode. So for initiative, mm -hmm. do I get bonus successes for strife? Uh, yeah, if you. Succeed. I don't remember what we determined because I got three base without them. I'll say I... whether or not you write normally do your unmasking. So sure. Okay, so I then get six success and one opportunity for strife. <gasps> Ooh. I think we all know who's going first. Well, you know what? We it's uh, the wicked. Right. Yeah. You know what? You know what he got. Five success. Oh, dang! So that guy moves. But so he moves faster. Yes, apparently, he does. Okay, As can you, I make it to him? You scream! You cry out! Weapon drawn! Uh -huh. Charge into the chamber as he mm -hmm. little swivels about. Uh, appears to be mostly human features. There are strange markings along the side of his face. So I'm not paying attention to any of this. You're just, yeah, it's you, red haze has descended, and I. I would like to rage. It would take a lot to stop me from taking taking a swipe at him. I'm not going to stop you. Do your thing. So I make it to him and I can actually strike at him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so this is would be melee. Yes. Um, and then, so that would be two skill dice and I'm in fire stance. Mm -hmm. So four ring dice. So I have two skill dice and four ring dice. All right. Mm -hmm. That looks like a happy face. Yeah, yeah very but happy. But a happy face. Kill him! Kill him! <laughs> so. Oh, killing imaginary people is delightful. Okay, so. That I'm... guy's gonna get impaled up. Put on a happy face. <laughs> okay, okay I can impaled. only keep four dice because I can only keep up to my right. ring. Yes. Correct. Okay, so I'm gonna move, remove those. I'm gonna explode that. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I'm gonna explode that one. Mm hmm. And you explode. No, mash, now she's compromised. <laughs> I might be getting real close, but um, so a base of uh, five success, and then another three success on top of that with the strength. All right, so that's eight success plus your weapon damage, and or seven plus weapon damage. He was unawares, and you went before he did. So he is not blocking any of this. Question, <laughs> um, question, question, we, we question. Might be over here. <laughs> Kana striking as fire. What it, does that do anything for me? Yes. Um, I don't have any opportunity. No. Okay. <laughs> it would. <laughs> it would if I had opportunity. Yeah, if you had That's opportunity. Where I put my opportunity. If, if I, I had, had it. If you had opportunity, that could potentially have given you. Um, that 16 instant death critical hit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you're adding your bonus successes, all seven of them, to the deadliness of what your is katana, the katana, which is also veiled seven. veiled menace style? That one, if they are unaware... Oh, I, I have that one. 181, okay. Um, Help you, me out, David. Oh, oh, again, opportunity. Oh, okay. Ah. Ugh. Again, if we had some, I didn't even have any opportunity... Like, I don't think I had any opportunity on any of my other dice either, so... Okay. But you still hit him really hard with a pointy bit of metal. Mm -hmm. And do I get the... Uh, do I... What does the deadliness do That's again? That's for crits. That's, That's for, crits. for crits. And I... Well, how do you crit again? Because I remember I crit was the one we there, were fighting. There are abilities that let you crit, or if he does not reduce the damage to zero, you crit. Okay. Which is now. So I crit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So your bonus successes, which is seven, plus, let me find the thing with the space and the things. Um, what, the deadliness of a katana, I'm assuming you're using both hands. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's deadliness it's, seven. It's the, oh, and, plus and, and this is the, the fast run, the slow-mo, double, double hand and, over and then, the end. And then probably a little, little bit of a, a leap. <laughs> 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 no. Okay. The, the self beat. So, oh well, when a, when a character suffers a, a critical strike, they must make a target number one fitness check oh, to mitigate right. the effect. So yes. he gets a chance to mitigate. Okay. But I, what was the thing that I was able to up the? 
up the the target number of that? Well, how was I able to do that last uh, time? That, that was something that Yoshi had done, I think. Oh, he, okay. He increased the difficulty. He increased the difficulty, and then I... Uh, so, any... Okay. Oh, God, the guys. <clears throat> Give him some shapes. Give With your platonic solids. With my skill and ring, guys. <laughs> Actually, I think that... No, D12... Are D12s platonic solids? Yeah, they are. No. Oh. It's the D8 that's not. There, there, there's one of them that is not. I remember it's that eight. because my tattoo oh. artist told Wow, that's a lot eight of eight tens. But uh, four, well, six, good for us. twelve. Yeah. Those Say are... what? What happened? That's a lot of blanks. But yeah? he, he got he, he mitigated it a bit. Okay, that's so good. So how much did he mitigate it? Two. Two. Okay, so that brings it from a fourteen down to a twelve. I rolled six dice though. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Like um, individual. The character suffers the severely wounded condition for the ring they use for their check to resist, as well as the bleeding and dying three rounds condition. Mm-hmm. Agonizing death. The blow is mortal and the character knows it. So you cornered the bear. <clears throat> we'll see how this oh, goes. It could have been swift death. He would have had mm-hmm. one one round. Uh huh. But we got we got a three round combat. As Sahin, you've charged in and just shoom, the blade just sinks down like you, you feel the clavicle give out beneath Ooh, the blow oh. and just <laughs> sinks down in and he actually catches you by the shoulder as he leans forward and looks deep into your face as you're you're there in your Yeah, my face is so <clears throat> deep. <laughs> Well, not currently, it's pretty shallow. It's just anger. <laughs> and Ooh, yeah. Every strife he takes uh, inflicts damage, which immediately causes a critical. Interesting. All right. And that's from the bleeding and severely wounded. Uh, My work here is done. Increases the target number of the checks by the effective ring by three. All right. So whatever fitness check he just made, all of those rings go up by three. The... Oh, man, you've been told is this Veral character, just as he's looking into your face, there's blood already <laughs> pooling and like dripping from his I'm still lower glaring. Lip, and slowly a smile comes over his face. I don't like this, but oh. I'm still glaring. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I yank my <laughs> As you yank the sword out, he pulls back. He's just clutching the wound. You're certainly effective. Oh, you got in here sooner. And just the one good arm that the he's got. The next time I am able to stab him, I am stabbing him. Just reaches seemingly into the nothingness of air and oh. vanishes up to the forearm, just out of sight withdrawing, and there's this mound of weaponry that seems to have enclosed his forearm from the front of it, this almost blunderbuss mechanical face of whatever flechette weapon he has brought to bear. <clears throat> Let us see how good of an end I can make it. And that's where we're going to pick it up next week. <laughs> was that his full turn? It was not. That was okay, cause a I would... dramatic effect. Okay. Because I figured he draws probably part of a thing and he might be able to... Basically next it, w- it will not affect your attack upon him. Okay, <laughs> unless he kills me in one shot. But I'm, I'm not guess- Morgan, I'm and so... I'm guessing he's going to go for me? He, he is up next. So we yeah, will no, see how it goes, but we can probably not resolve the combat very swiftly. No. If three rounds can take a while. Yeah. <clears throat> so we will uh, see. We'll be back, dear reader. Yeah. Maybe. How, dear um... reader? <laughs> dear listener, wow. The final. This has been bedtime stories with. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll pick up in what are apparently the final moments of one Veral. We will see how that culminates next time on. Tim Portolos. Thanks for checking out our show. If you want to learn more about us, follow us at Tim Portlers on Twitter, or you can email us directly at tim.portlers at gmail.com.